Hey, welcome back to Brighter Rays. This week we're in Proverbs chapter 3, as we've been in for a while now. And today's study is called Do Not Despise Discipline, or in uh, verses 11 through 12. And I've mentioned several times already that f the first nine chapters of Proverbs are written from the perspective of father to son. I want to keep hammering that because that helps us to understand how we ought to read this. Uh, now, when you think about the parent-child relationship, what comes to mind? Well, for most of us, the idea of discipline will come to mind somewhere in there in our thoughts. Uh, we can remember our childhood and the discipline we experienced, or, or lack thereof. I've, you know, I've had these conversations with people over the years. You know, you, you, know, you talk about, did your parents spank you or not? What, what did they use to spank you? You know, did you get grounded? Uh, what did your parents do for discipline? And so we all have a view of what discipline is and how it should be done. We all have that, no matter uh, if you had bad discipline or good discipline when you're growing up. So for the most part, these ideas were formed by the experiences of discipline you had over the years, right? Our childhood experiences weigh heavily on our concepts of discipline. Not only that, but discipline in the workplace shapes people's ideas as well. In this area, like many others, our personal experience can dictate to us a lot of our thoughts on discipline. But wisdom tells us that God's word, not our experience, should be what forms our concept of discipline. His commands and laws are the standard by which we must look at. God has a definite idea and a definite definition of discipline. The weak seek to align their thoughts and experiences with his thoughts and his ways and don't allow their experience to dictate to them what they should believe because oftentimes our experiences are um, not that they're not valid but they can they can you know force you to believe things that may or may not be true especially about discipline so that's what wisdom says <clears throat> you know are you going to listen to me or are you going to listen to your experience but how many actually are wise in this? That's the question. Well, our passage this week is a short and succinct teaching on discipline. This is not the end all of the biblical idea, the, the biblical concept of discipline. This is not the total teaching on it, obviously. You'll notice that this does not teach us how to discipline. When you read Proverbs 3, 11 through 12, it doesn't tell you how to discipline. And this proverb teaches us how to be on the, really the receiving end of discipline. Specifically, it teaches us how to receive discipline from our Heavenly Father. This is all about attitude. This problem does not deal with uh, outward behavior, but with the condition of our hearts. God disciplines His children. How are His children to respond inwardly? That's the question. That's what we find here in Proverbs chapter 3. Now, in, this, in these verses, I want to point out to you two main ideas, and we're going to look at those this week. First, we find two things we need to be aware of when we are undergoing discipline. And then secondly, we find two things that we can take comfort in during discipline. So there's the, the things we need to be aware of, and then there's the things we can take comfort in. Now, an easy way to teach this proverb would obviously be to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12 quotes this proverb and explains what this means. So that would be easy, but... I chose not to do the easy route, and I'm not going to... It's in Hebrews 12, so you can look at 12. It actually has a very good explanation um, of what this means. So if this is off, this if this teaching is off here, you can go to Hebrews 12 and get uh, what a more detailed look at it. But uh, we're going to do... We're going to go and look at some other places. I think it would be beneficial, because we could spend... I could spend the whole time this week just talking about Hebrews 12. But I think we'll go to other places to see where that discipline of God occurs and how it's explained in other places. But before we look at this, we must remember that there are two sides of biblical discipline. There's the corrective side, when we do something wrong and God disciplines us to bring us back in alignment with uh, what is right. And then the other side of discipline is instructive. So we experience discipline to learn something. Right? Sometimes we experience both at the same time, which usually occurs when we receive the corrective discipline. When you're getting corrected, usually you're, you're, you should be learning something so you don't have to have the corrective discipline again. Uh, that's the point. But 
lot of times, you know, instructive discipline uh, happens without the corrective part. So, um, so that's we got those two sides. So we're corrected and then taught what to do. But sometimes we receive discipline slowly to teach us what we need to do, what we need to know, or to give us something that we're missing. So I might discipline myself, um, you know, because I need to work out or something. So I need to discipline my body. Now that's kind of an instructive, a training, as you were, um, but it's not corrective. Like there's something uh, that it's doing that's evil. It just needs to be trained, right? So sometimes discipline and training are the same thing there, and then sometimes it's rebuke and and correction on the other side. <clears throat> but that's all together. So uh, if you think about it, Job is a good example of instruction, uh, instructive discipline, right? He was disciplined, sure, but it was more instructive. I mean, he was blameless before God, is what God said. Uh, so he wasn't didn't allow the, the bad things to happen in Job's life because he was evil and morally wrong. It was because, you know, instruction, training in righteousness, right? So, you know, soldiers are often under discipline so that they can perform better. You know, there's a discipline that comes with being a soldier, and that's, that's just to make you better, not to correct something that may be wrong. <clears throat> so we discipline ourselves so that we can achieve a certain goal, right? We, I want to go somewhere. I want to do something. I want to, like I said, you know, if you want to be a certain level of health, you discipline yourself. Uh, not because you're morally evil, but because... You know, you want to get better. You want to get better at something. You want to grow at something. Same thing in righteousness. You know, there's training righteousness. There's discipline in righteousness. That's kind of what we're talking about this week. So with that in mind, we will go to Proverbs 3 tomorrow and take a look at just what these two verses have to say um, and then go some other places to get a fuller understanding of this idea of discipline. So I'll see you next time.